As I was putting the finishing touches on my uh, presentation, uh, Addendum 5, I was just going through all these pictures of artifacts that I've had for years, I come to the conclusion that I need to cut some more video presentations on just the artifacts from right here in Marion County. Thousands of them. I've got pictures of thousands of artifacts that are incredible, incredible. Some that are crude, some that are incredible, some that are comical, some that are X-rated, which I've done a video on. And I just want to say that uh, this has been going on for decades. Uh, the first treasure book, I guess, that mentioned it was in 1960, 61 or so like that. And then subsequently in the 70s and early 80s, other treasure books had this site mentioned in it. And there is no other archaeological site the world over that has more paperwork documentation, more artifacts, more uh, uh, information uh, concerning the artifact, more ancient languages and scripted tablets the world over that compared to right here in Marion County. It's unbelievable the amount of information that, it, that I've got. I've got like several gigs of information. I've written two books, and other people have written books. And, oh, it's easy to call it a hoax if you don't know what you're talking about, or if you don't know ancient languages, or you have no clue. And there's a lot of people that don't have a clue. And I guess that's why I, I feel like this presentation uh, concerning artifacts, or this series of presentations, uh, is important. I guess I've been dragging my feet. I may even do a, a, a video just on the scripted tablets and, and show you how to do some of your own deciphering with our, our key, the, 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 um, the alphabetic key that Paul made back in 1994, a long time ago. And still, uh, no one the world over has proven us wrong at all or even come close. Uh, it seems like every week there's a, uh, or every month, every year, there's another, oh, new Alexander the Great um, discovery. And the next week it's gone. We've been standing strong now for, gosh, over 25 years. So we're going to jump right in. I'm going to start, uh, start with, uh, I guess, some of the gold artifacts uh, or, and gold replicated artifacts that I've written so much about that I've shown other people, you know, pictures of and used them in uh, different presentations, but never just focused in on, the, on what we have here. And that's what this series is going to be. And I, I hope you enjoy it. The hardest part about it is going to be able, is, is going to be categorizing these artifacts, uh, putting them in categories to, uh, to, to, to make sense. Enjoy. When I started to put this series together, I thought to myself, oh, man, I've got so many questions. If I was watching this for the first time and I didn't know what I was looking at or how Harry came into all this to have all these pieces. And I said, well, let's, where, where, did the, um, where did the dominoes begin to fall? And they began to fall with this article um, in Florida Today newspaper. Now, Florida Today is owned by USA Today. Florida Today is basically the Space Coast newspaper, and it's uh, big in Titusville, Daytona Beach, uh, Melbourne, Cocoa Beach, Palm Bay, uh, Cocoa, the, the Space Coast right in there. And this came out Sunday, August the 25th of 1996. And a uh, fellow that worked for me here, George, he knew a guy from Florida Today, one of the reporters, Billy Cox, and Billy Cox had heard about what we were doing through George, and and so he decided he wanted to do a an article. And as he started putting his article together, uh, Burroughs was calling him, threatening him, threatening his boss. Uh, uh, he would Burroughs would call the uh, 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 Florida Today, and if they, if some woman picked up the phone, Burroughs would just start cussing them out. All this is detailed, I believe, in book two. And here you can see the kid. I am a, a tender age 37 here in this picture, tender 37. And this article, when it came out, really um, set us on fire. And I'm going to, it's all, like I say, laid out in book two in quite detail. Ancients in Illinois, locals among those who believe Burroughs Cave is the tomb of Alexander the Great. Yeah. And so 
this is what happened is this story came out on Sunday I called Billy Cox and said man I, I thought that your article was gonna be a lot better press is not being kind to me really uh, very much uh, and uh, a, a, a few places have but what happened was is Jack Ward's daughter lived in uh, West Melbourne and she had picked up the paper and read it and funny thing I had known her husband Harry Elkin at this time in 1996 I had known him 11 years and didn't know he was Jack Ward's son-in-law and he was a security guard at the West Gate of one of my uh, uh, the manufacturing plants that I contracted with and there were weeks that went by that I saw him like every day and had a good rapport with him and when when uh, his wife June Elkin read the article she got furious like why why didn't you contact me uh, this and that this and that whatever and and uh, Harry told her hey man he's a good guy let him have it he can take it he can take it so that's where this is where we started to get into more of Jack Ward's papers pictures everything everything this is the article that started it was it was like several pages long let's continue June and Harry Elkin came to my shop and brought a, uh, a a box with her and I said well you know I don't think that there's anything that they could offer that we don't already know and she had a shoe box and in it was probably about four inches of these kind of photographs and this right here is the real deal this is real gold pieces that came from this tomb and say, so, well how do you know because at this time at the time this picture was taken they hadn't had time enough to have the the replicated slugs manufactured they this was just completely as it was coming out of the tomb and they were wrapping stuff up and taking care of it and this was before they had uh, started stashing it in safety deposit boxes this is one of the piles this is some more of my trick photography this is uh, two pictures of the same of the same table different signal I believe there's probably a picture missing a lot of these photographs turned out blurry and the reason for that is I would suppose is because it's real hard to take pictures of real gold back then with a strobe or a flash camera and a lot of these were taken with like a 110 uh, I don't even know if people remember that that was a real slim real uh, a small camera and that's what Burroughs had and I believe Jack Ward had one also and they used 110 film that's why they were calling that's why they were called 110s and so most of the pictures were blurry and a lot of them I didn't even bother I've got I've got so many um, there was just no point several of these pictures are featured in book two here's some more we see a bunch of tannets down here at the bottom and uh, right here are three of the elephant medallions which we'll get into later here's another picture from the table this shows some more medallions and again this is all real gold And all of these photographs came from June and Harry Elkin. She made me promise that I was going to go after Burroughs and clear her father's name. I said, hey, that's what I've been doing. No problem there. No, it's just blurry. It's just hard to get good. And these are the better pictures. Don't get too excited because we're going to look at a lot of these much closer up. But in the end, Jack Ward and Russell Burroughs made a replica of each and every one of these pieces. Here's another blurry one, but you can clearly see these are gold bars. And who took the pictures? It had to be Russ Burroughs and Jack Ward. 
and or Jack Ward. After becoming friends with June Elkin, I had already been friends with Harry Elkin for over a decade, they allowed me to go through Jack Ward's file cabinet, which was in their back bedroom there in uh, a park in uh, West Melbourne. And I found these gold pictures here. These are all 8 by 10 pictures that I'm fixing to show you. There's a few of them here. And uh, this particular picture here, I believe more likely Jack Ward took it. I believe Jack Ward took all of these with this black background because the coinage that you see here as you laid these coins out on the on the 8x10 uh, later on, they appeared to be about actual size, which I thought was really neat. The way he stacked these up and the way he laid them out, he knew what he was doing. And he was trying to get an accurate record of everything. And this was, this is indeed the real deal. This is real gold, ancient gold coins. See a bunch of tannets in here. Elephants. I'm going to be doing a, a something on elephants later. Here's a couple of smaller gold bars. They have the uh, Egyptian eagle on them. This is a tablet I deciphered later because we had so many of them, but this is the actual real gold piece right here. And notice it's real clean. The script on it is, is clean, cleaner than all the rest of them that I had. And, and this is just getting, I'm just starting by showing what we got from from uh, uh, Jack Ward's file cabinet and June Elkin and Harry Elkin. This is Sutek calling Oh Helios. Oh Helios. And we knew that there were gold tablets and gold coins because it was uh, we had uh, two pictures, uh, the Yuba coin and the Gadiz elephant uh, in our uh, photo collection. And in the Mystery Cave of Many Faces book, there were several pieces in there, but it, they were all in black and white, and you don't get the full, the full impact of seeing something in gold when it's just pictured in black and white. And here's Helios, the benevolent one that nourishes the people. In likeness of the sun god Ra, and I, I, this is deciphered in a couple of the videos, just right here in the middle, you can see the Helios cartouche. Not very well, but this is the real deal. This is a real golden medallion from this tomb. Over a year later, while I was living in Illinois with Paul, uh, I had agreed with uh, Wayne May to supply him with uh, pictures of gold artifacts, gold pieces, and I put together this ancient American magazine with his help and I supplied him with a couple of thousand dollars to cover the cost of additional color photographs in this magazine and the front cover he chose and it's Jack Ward rolling around in the real gold this is the real deal this is volume 3 issue 16 this right here is the actual picture that the cover is taken from I supplied that, but it all came from June and Harry Elkin. This is the rear of that same magazine, the back cover. And Ron Strantz, who worked for me at the time, he did, he did all this, uh, this graphic work here, and it was just beautiful. He did an excellent, excellent job. But I'm going to blow it up, and I'm going to take your attention. You see the Helios insignia here, the motif our registered trademark. These two right here, okay? And the lot of pictures that I sent to Wayne May, there was this cartouche clearly on uh, some gold bricks. And I never got that picture back and we never saw anything else like it. This right here is the Arxantris Alexandros Magnus cartouche, Egyptian cartouche, that was on these gold tablets. So this is not a superimposed, it, well, it's actually superimposed here, but it's actually lifted. It is actually lifted from a gold piece. 
I used the the actual pictures of the of the blocked gold pieces on the front cover of my book. Kathy Herder did an excellent job with uh, my front cover. And here I'm going to blow it up so you can see it. These were, there were like three of them laying next to each other. And that is the, the cartouche of Alexander the Great in Egyptian hieroglyph. A very Baroque form of it. And I want to add here also that there were several pictures that I sent home with Wayne May or sent him that he did not return. He always said, oh, I lost them. I can't find them. One of the most significant pictures was a briefcase sitting on a chair. And on top of that briefcase was a gold slab that appeared to be half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. And it was half the size of the briefcase. And it had Helios right across the top of it in great big bold characters. And I wanted that picture, but I, I, did, I had problems even sending it with him. And even these cartouches, but he did. He kept them. It was hard getting the truth out of Wayne May. I guess it still is today. Paul and I had just finished up a conference in Denver in August of 97. And we had been coordinating with Tom Elkin, who lived in Vincennes, Indiana, he had told us, and his mother had, uh, and father had told us that uh, that he was there. He had some of these pieces, and he was going to let us photograph them, and such. And so, the local newspaper man, who was big Jack Ward fan, uh, had because he had been uh, to Jack Ward's museum when he was a little boy, and just loved Jack Ward and his artifacts. He came out with a photographer, and he took pictures of Paul and myself. And here you see these tables covered. There were several tables in the living room here covered up with these uh, replicated. These are now replicas, gold replicas. They are made out of lead painted uh, um, with gold paint. And he had several boxes of them. And the lens that I had on my camera, was there was no way I could take pictures of, of the tables because it was my camera setup was, was made to shoot just small items on a, on a pedestal. I had an old uh, uh, um, Yashica 35 millimeter. I used like uh, F100 film. Lighting was was a pain. It was hard to get a lot of these artifacts down. So anyway, this is the page that was used in that newspaper. And we had started taking pictures, and we Paul and I came up with more questions than answers after this. This was just bizarre. Now we're going to jump up to February of 2013. And we had known that Jack Ward and Russell Burroughs had a, had a couple of safety deposit boxes at the Regions Bank there in Vincennes. And uh, I detail the, um, in, in book two how Tom Elkins and I, uh, uh, we were thrown out of the bank. He, and we had it set up. He was going to create a diversion. I was going to slip in behind the counter. And I was going to be able to look at the Rolodex. That's when they had Rolodexes back then. And to see who checked in and out of the safety deposit boxes. As it were, Jack Ward opened up the boxes and put the initial gold in there. And every entry after that was all Russell Burroughs. So Russell Burroughs was the one that was making the replicated pieces. And you'll notice here, in, in, in this right here, this was all done by Goodwill. Goodwill ended up with all these pieces in, at the uh, Attorney General's office in, 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 in Indianapolis. And here you'll see the, the article that Paul and I were in that I just showed you. And so they laid all these out around this because they knew that, and they contacted a guy, the man in Boston, and, and he sent them to me. And and I'm like, well you had our article. Why didn't you just call you know contact me or Paul? But we don't know. But anyway, this is how they laid it all out. And this is Goodwill Industries, as much as we can tell, they were gonna sit and Goodwill could not could not take these because they were lead and the paint was lead based also. So there's a dilemma. It was going to cost them a lot of money to have somebody come and pick them up 
and dispose of them. And I'm like, oh, wait a second, wait a second. So I had to get in touch with them, and that is where we take some twists and turns. Here you see Shop Goodwill. I'm going to show all of these that they sent because I believe it's important for anyone to see who's following this how Goodwill managed uh, me to get these into my hands and, and whatever. It was all a big ordeal. I wanted them. I wanted these things bad. Actually, they had some really good shots. Really good, clear shots. Here again, we see several of the elephant coins or medallions. And these are not real. Well, they're real replicas. They are copies of the real deal. Each one is, is unique. Here's some more. And their shots were very clean and crisp. They had an excellent photographer. And these, again, were at the Attorney General's office in South Indianapolis. Now we're looking at the unclaimed property claim form that the lady sent me to further my claimant for these pieces. And the relationship to original owner, guardian of documents, friend of family. And it was because of uh, the help of Tom Elkin and Tom Cullen that I was able to get this because I had to have death certificates from Norm Cullen and Jack Ward and I had to get those and and uh, it was one of the guys there at the Vincennes newspaper he helped me a lot I believe he was the photographer or one of the photographers that came out with uh, the fellow that did the uh, article they were very helpful and I'm just gonna scroll it down here you see here Norm Cullen John Ward safety deposit box contents Regions Bank this was in Vincennes boom I'm just going to scroll it up here and let you see the whole thing. And I was really crossing my T's and dotting my I's. I wanted this stuff so bad. Here's the secondary page of it. It's February of 13. I didn't think it was necessary to show all the other paperwork. And then I was able to go to the AG office in Indianapolis and pick up these boxes. They, these two, it took both of those women pulling as hard as they could to get this out because I, I had taken a hand truck with me. And they said, well, you were thinking ahead. And this is over 200 pounds. The 60 pounds, and these two were here were both over 70, 70 pounds. I think the one was 74 and one was 75 or so. We worked out a deal where it, the, it said, well, how much will you pay? So I said, well, I will donate, because it had to go to Goodwill, I will donate uh, what the current price for lead is. And I can't remember what the current price for lead was, but I uh, had taken cash and uh, had left them with the current price of lead for the amount that they had. And I can't remember, it was over 200 bucks. I think it was like a dollar ten, dollar fifteen cents back then for a pound of lead and like I say they had pro they were going to have to do all kinds of stuff to get rid of it here's another shot you see the claim number here which was on the forms here it is here it says one of two but there are actually three boxes you can clearly see that and so now we're going to look what this yield netted for me and our project so over the next several days, I had cleared off my workbench in my shop, put out my blue velvet, and I started unpacking stuff and putting stuff together, documenting what there was, what there wasn't, and I'm just going to cruise through. They're going to mind my own business and cruise through some of these photographs of the composites.
I'm just going to mind my own business. Look at all these Helios bricks. <laughs> This one's a shade blurry. How'd you like to have all this in your shop, on your workbench, if it was the real deal? But hey, the replicas are good too. I'll take them. That way they, the IRS can't, it's just as much fun. It's like some of these uh, 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 currencies I have. The replicas are just as much fun. And several of these were marked with ounces and they were uh, a verre de poire ounces. I don't know if I said that right. A de bois. And they weren't marked as Troy ounces, which I found a little strange. They didn't know. I mean, I, it means to me that probably Russell Burroughs was the one weighing them and writing them down. Now, a year later, John Elkin, who's Tom Elkin's brother, was in Pennsylvania. And he also had a had a, a pretty large stash of some of these gold medallions and coins. And he sent us pictures. Now it says right here 12820, but it was actually 2014. He had this many. And we we had never seen this. And to it appears to this day that there is still uh, one pile of gold that we don't know what happened to it. And we don't know if there were ever any replicas made of it. I would assume that there were, but we don't have we, we don't have any pictures of them. A lot of the same type of gold coins. There you see some tannets. See 12814 right here. Now you've seen the major gold stashes where all this came from back and forth. And that's how I'm starting this presentation. And here's my helper. Now I'm going to show these. I'm in my shop. And this is what I uh, still have. This is how I keep them. Wrapped up in totes. You can't put a lot of them in totes. The total will just bust. This one right here is very heavy. Here's a wide shot on it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, three little totes, one medium size and two big ones. And here's my helper. Hey, buddy. There's one of my neighbors again. Hey there. It's raining. It's been raining all day. He's probably saying, it's breaking the rain. I think I'm going to go munchy down. He's eating apple now. And there's some cherries out there, too. Hey there. And here's my cat looking at him, too. And I didn't know that they that possums were so useful with their hands. They they, they eats eat, they eat like like uh, they with squirrels. They use their hands and, and and raccoons. They use their hands to facilitate their meals. Right there's a cat. That's a lahu akbar. Just chowing down. Cleaning up some old frozen french fries. My neighbors.
I'm going to be showing each of these about 10 seconds. And I'm going to be giving the sizes. This one here is about an inch and a quarter long. And this is about an inch, but uh, each photograph is going to show for about 10 seconds. And all of these were taken in Vincennes, Indiana in 1997. August. This piece here is about an inch and a half long. I've blown everything up to make it a little bit more obvious to the or whatever. This one here is about an inch, an inch high. You see the Egyptian eagle for gold there. The audio is going to be different here. Uh, this piece here is about the size of a nickel. This is uh, Marcus Antonius, Antonius N I U S 3. So we figured that's triumvir. This is a pretty big medallion, about two and a half inches. This piece here is about the size of a 50 cent piece. This is a pretty big one here, it's about two and a half inches across. And if you don't want to hear my narration, uh, you can kill the volume and just speed up the video. There's another one pretty big. That's about the size of a silver dollar. Here's another one about the size of a dime. Pretty small. This one here is about the size of a penny. I'm sparing you several of the other photographs that have other coins and such in them. This one here is about the size of a dime, pretty small. And all of these that you see, these are the best ones. Paul was pulling them out of the piles and, and picking the best ones for me to, uh, to uh, shoot. Here's another one about the size of a dime. And you have to assume that each one of these that you are seeing, there were probably 10, 15, 20 of them all over the place. There were many of them. Here's another one about the size of a nickel. This one's about the size of a penny. This one's the size of a quarter. Here's another one about the size of a quarter. It could be the actual flip side of that um, horse, the previous coin. Simple palm tree, about the size of a quarter. This is the reverse of it. This one's about the size of a dime. This one's about the size of a penny. <clears throat> Here's another one about the size of a penny. This one's about the size of a nickel. Maybe larger, between this quarter and a nickel. Here's a tannet, about the size of a quarter, or a little bit larger. And all of these were pretty thick. They were much thicker than modern coins. Here's one about the size of a nickel. Here's another one about the size of a quarter. Just going to flash them up for 10 seconds apiece. This one's another one about the size of a 50 cent piece. About the size of a nickel. The hoard in Vincennes had a lot of coins. A lot of coins. Large, small, all sizes, all everywhere. Just hundreds of them. Here's a little tannet. About the size of a penny. Another palm tree, size of a quarter. 
Here's another one, a little bit larger than a quarter. This one here is between a quarter and a nickel. And here's the Yuba Elephant. Uh, this was from uh, Joe Mahan's collection. This is one of the first gold pictures that we had. Here's a horse about the size of a nickel, maybe a little bit larger. This horse with the palm tree going up through him is uh, about the size of a silver dollar. It's pretty big. And I believe this is the reverse of it. Not 100% positive. This one's about the size of a 50 cent piece. Here's another one about the size of a 50 cent piece. Looks a lot like one of the others there, doesn't it? This one's pretty big, about the size of a silver dollar. This one here is pretty big. It's a medallion, probably about two inches across. Another palm tree. This is about the size of a quarter. This is another small one, about the size of a dime. And this is, looks like a whale, but it's about the size of a nickel. It's pretty small. And I think there are like 20 of these guys. Looks like a ram head. That's about the size of a dime. Here's another large elephant. These are all about like inch and a half, inch and three quarters or so. And pretty thick, pretty heavy. It's another elephant, about the size of a quarter maybe. And this is a pretty big one here. This is about the size of a silver dollar. Helios got a snake on it. I think we're going into the Helios section. Here's another Helios, pretty big, about the size of a silver dollar. Here's another one, about the size of a silver dollar. This one's pretty big, about two inches across. Got Helios on it with an elephant. We consider all of these pretty much Helios coins or medallions. Here's another Helios. Looks like an old man here. Here's another Helios. And it's got Helios in with a snake. That design in the center is a snake. And it looks like he's got a rattle on his tail. A couple of little bricks. Well, there were actually several of them. Got the, got the gold eagle on it. This has got the three on it and got the hole. And this is probably about an inch. There were several of these. I ended up with several more of them. But I say all these came from the Vincennes Horde in 1997. And this one's a little bit larger, maybe an inch and a half by half an inch. Got the Egyptian Eagle. There's another Helios. That's about the size of a quarter. It's got Helios inscribed on the This is about two and a half inches long. <sighs> what do you call that? A medallion. Got arms like one of the other fellas. Short little arms. I call it a trinket. Here's one of the um, 
bands, and this band was like, I think made in like bronze, uh, but in the uh, pictures it was gold, the originals, and it was big, it was pretty large. Several shots of it. That what you see there is about an inch and a quarter. This one here was very small. This is about the size of a dime. And there were several of them. Really nice uh, crafted piece. Here's another trinket, probably an inch and a quarter from top to bottom. This is another pretty big piece, probably about two inches across. And here's the reverse of it, same, the same medallion. Little falcon or eagle, we don't know for sure. There were several of these. And every horde had plenty of these. Now we get in some stuff there. At the bottom you see an S-E-N-I-U. There's an O-C-B. This one here can't make out that bottom letter there. But uh, the last one's probably an inch. This one's probably an inch and a quarter. About three quarters of an inch high. This one here is an inch by maybe three quarters of an inch. Pretty small. And that concludes this presentation. There's a squirrel on my deck here. I'm not sure exactly what he's doing. So he's trying to gnaw on one of the boards there. Huh. Coming out from under the steps. Hey. hey. I got a full time. I'm going to go run and hide for a little bit. Where's your partner? And he goes up here and, and, and eats what I put out for the birds. Ha, ha, ha.